Memories of Chandler Pharmacy, 1948 to 1983. Hello, my name is Edith Carpenter Haas. I grew up in Chandler, Arizona, and my dad owned a drugstore. It was called Chandler Pharmacy. In 1948, when my dad, John Buren Carpenter, purchased the business, Chandler had only 3,800 residents. By the time he closed the doors on his pharmacy in 1980, in 1983, Chandler's population had increased more than seven times that. This was a young town just getting started, as was my dad with his young family. In this video, I will show some of the old-time equipment used in those days and tell about some of the events surrounding the hometown business, the Chandler Pharmacy. My father went by Buren, but often used the initial J with Buren. He purchased Chandler Pharmacy in 1948 and moved the family from Flagstaff, Arizona to Chandler, Arizona, arriving on a hot evening, July 30th. My mother, Lenore, being eight months pregnant, was miserable in the heat and thought at first they had to have taken a wrong turn and ended up in Hades. But later, she adjusted. I was born a little more than a month later. At that time, the family consisted of my dad and mom and my sister Janelle, who was three years old at the time of the move. When the Carpenter family came to Chandler, the entire business district was around the town square, with not more than a block extension in any direction. They purchased a home at 198 East Buffalo, just catty corner from the city park. The LDS church was across the street, south and near the west end of the hundred block on Buffalo. The store was within easy walking distance, so the home was conveniently located for a family with young children. The drugstore, the Chandler Pharmacy, was a new business on the square, located at 80 South San Marcos, just up the street from the famous San Marcos Resort Hotel. Ralph Yance had opened its doors only three years earlier. The couple bought the one-time Chandler Walgreens on August the 16th, 1948. The family had their hometown. They would live here for the next 55 years. In those early years, the store had a lunch counter and soda fountain with 14 stools. The fountain was a principal gathering place in those days when Man's Shoe Store, Roscoe's 5 and 10 Store, Shepherd's Barbershop, and the Rowena Theater were just a few of the businesses active in the bustling downtown district. An article written in the Chandler, Arizona newspaper the 20th of August, 1983, recalled that at noon this place would just load up with kids from school. There wasn't all this fast food in those days. The women working downtown would come in and also the men with all the hunting and fishing stories being exchanged on the stools. There was also a fair share of courting that took place over five cent cones and cherry phosphates. My favorite order was a chocolate soda and a ham salad sandwich. It was very special to visit my father's drugstore and be allowed to order something at the soda fountain. Other items on the menu were egg salad, ham salad, and lettuce and tomato sandwiches. Yes, just lettuce and tomato. When Lenore baked a big roast at home and made the gravy, hot roast beef sandwiches were a very popular item. For several years, a fountain special was a Tom Crumpler, which was a very thick malt topped with a cherry and peanuts. A unique treat were square blocks of ice cream in various flavors that were made by the Arden Ice Cream Company. Have you ever tried a square ice cream cone? Yummy! The store always ordered a good supply of strawberry flavor since the customers from the Indian Reservation invariably ordered either strawberry ice cream or a cherry phosphate drink. There were also chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla sodas and malts, ice cream sundaes, and cones. All great items in the hot desert of Arizona. I looked forward to the day that I would get to work behind the counter at the soda fountain. But lo and behold, my dad decided to remodel the store in 1962 when I was 14 years old and removed the soda fountain from the store. But he kept the multi-mixer machine, which was used to make malts and sodas. Somehow I inherited the machine, and so I got to use it a few times to make special cold treats. As a child, I I love the weight and fate scale. After all, who wouldn't like to 
to have your fortune and weight taken for only a penny. Of course, I always had to ask my daddy for a penny to use the scale when I visited the drugstore where he was the owner and pharmacist. For many years, the scale was located in the back of the store. There were some nice features of the scale. For example, I knew what the ideal weight for men and women was because there was a chart listed for each on the front of the machine. Unfortunately, I was underweight. I only weighed 98 pounds when I was 14 years old, so my weight was not on the charts. I consistently put my penny in the slot for my birth month, hoping for a special fortune. But when I got older, I tried different months. What was interesting is that no matter the month that the penny was dropped into, I soon discovered that the same fortune always appeared. Buren retired in 1983. My mom used a display case from the store to show some items that a pharmacist used daily. Some of the equipment you can see are pharmacy scales and pharmacy weights, flasks, funnels, pharmacy stamps, labels, mortar and pestle, pill counter, alcohol burner, milking tubes, a pharmacist reference book, a pharmacy journal, drug encyclopedia, bottle labels that the pharmacist would type up on his trusty typewriter for applying, a hydrometer, and don't miss reading some of Buren's favorite sayings that were on display in the pharmacy. Pharmacists can always read a doctor's handwriting, right? Well, actually, I asked my dad how he could read some of the writing. He said sometimes he had to call the doctor on the telephone. As a child, I really enjoyed the old adding machine. Do you know that in the 1950s and earlier, there was no such thing as a calculator? Buren would add up each medication on the adding machine before punching the total into the cash register. The adding machine was often located on his pharmacy desk. A fun event started by the Chamber of Commerce was called Maxwell Street Days. This event started in March 1958 and was a yearly occurrence for many years. All businesses would move out on the streets and the salesmen and ladies dressed in costume of the gay 90s. The event was patterned after Maxwell Street in Chicago. 1962 brought interesting changes to the Carpenter family. During that summer, the store was completely remodeled. The fountain was taken out as well as the glass display counter height cases on the opposite wall. The cash register, later named the bullpen by the employees, was placed at the center front. This also decreased the number of employees needed to only two. For many years, Buren had complained that women completely dominated his life because he had five on duty at the store and when he came home, there were five more. But in reality, Buren was fortunate to have many wonderful employees during those years. Lenore and Buren really wanted to retire and begin advertising the store. By April 1978, the store was still theirs. Buren decided to start closing the store at 6 p.m. After 30 years, it was nice to be home in the evenings. Buren and Lenore's son, Jay, graduated from college in 1980, and they had a daughter, Deanne, serving a mission for the LDS Church. Finances were tight when Buren got a financial break upon being offered the contract to fill prescriptions for the Maricopa County welfare patients. This meant he would be filling at least 45 more prescriptions a day, and often more in addition to his regular customers. He would be receiving $1,500 a month plus $1.75 for each prescription over the daily average of $45. That equaled about $200 in addition to the monthly contract amount most months. This was a bonus financially, although it put more pressure on him to work long hours on his feet. The carpenters were able to pay off all their debts by December 31st, 19. What a wonderful blessing to be free of debt. 
favorite Chandler pharmacy stories include the story of the grandmother who called her pharmacist at 2 a.m. to have him go get a pacifier to keep the baby quiet because the dog had chewed up the baby's pacifier. The husband who came into the drugstore five minutes before it closed on Christmas Eve to find his wife a Christmas gift. There wasn't a lot available at that time, but Buren cooperated by producing just the right watch or jewelry that hadn't sold all during the previous year. Both business owner and customer left happy. Buren would count on this scenario every Christmas Eve. It is not a bad idea to have a pharmacist check your prescriptions. Once a man came in with a prescription for a possible heart attack, and the pharmacist, after looking at what the medication was, said, if you take this medicine, you will have a heart problem. It will kill you. Buren was quite a hand to kid the customers. People have said his jokes are as much therapy as the medicine. They'd come in feeling kind of droopy and leave feeling pretty good. Once a man came in who had suffered for seven hours with the hiccups. After trying everything, he ended up at the pharmacy. One tablespoon of hiccup medicine did the trick. Buren retired in August of 1983. When he retired, it didn't work out the way he would have preferred. He would have liked to have sold the whole business, but the owner of the building would not renew the lease, and so he had no choice but to sell all the merchandise and walk away. He was 74 years old. The Chandler, Arizona ran a front page article in the Saturday, August 20th, 1983 issue on the closing of the Chandler Pharmacy. It quoted a longtime customer who said, What are we going to do? You've been so much help. The article then continued that personal contact with their pharmacists is what people like. Everybody likes to discuss their aches and pains and get assurance they're doing the right thing. Interestingly, an old penny scale that tells weights and fortunes has been stuck on one prediction for years. You have a faculty for making people come to you for advice. Yes, that describes my father, John Buren Carpenter, pharmacist at the Chandler Pharmacy.